Honey, I think we need to evacuate. I think I just did. Honey, we gotta go. Hold, hold my hand. We'll get, we'll, we'll get out of here. This wind is so strong. We're gonna get blown over. Don't worry. I've got big feet. We're well grounded. Oh no! I just lost my toupee. Welcome to Stress-Free You, insights on living a calm and peaceful life with Matt and Katie Rush and Rich Taylor. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. That may be a funny skit, but it is a serious matter we're talking about today. Uh, Matt and Katie are off. They're presenting at a conference in the Panhandle of Florida at the beach and enjoying the beach. So speaking of that, we're talking about hurricanes and how to prepare for them and all the kind of natural disasters so you can live through it in a much stress-freer way. So first of all, visit stressforyou.net and that's where all our information is and let's get right into the show. Hurricanes are part of nature and if you live in an area where they happen, you need to be prepared for them. And speaking of hurricanes, typhoons are in Pacific Ocean and hurricanes are in Atlantic Ocean. So that's, I guess, basically a difference, but they're both very strong, powerful storms, can do a lot of damage, and being prepared is the best way to handle them. So stay tuned to the end of the show where I'm going to share a special tip that I created on how to make your refrigerator stay cold for a long, long time if you lose power. Now, as a resident of Florida for over 30 years, I've had many experiences of dealing with hurricanes, it, watching them on television, build and track and coming this way and that way and the cone of you know gets smaller and smaller and bigger and bigger and you know it's going to go this way it's going to go that way they can be somewhat predictable they can be somewhat unpredictable but the one thing you can do is predict is that if they come in your way they're going to be stressful so the best way to keep that stress from being a big problem is to be prepared in advance and the best way you can do is have everything taken care of as much as that's in your control. I'm going to share a whole bunch of tips that I've learned and are pretty common. So here we go. First of all, with the wind blowing like it can't be, go outside and remove any weak branches you might have on trees or cut down dead trees or something like that. Again, this may be something you can't do, so you may need to hire someone and do it in advance. Another thing to do is remove any outdoor furniture you might have, like patio furniture. And it's a big thing in Florida. If you have a pool, you take the patio furniture and you throw it in the pool because it ain't going anywhere if it's in the pool. Now, if you have a barbecue or something like that, you don't want to throw that in the pool. That needs to be put away. Especially if you got like propane tanks with your barbecue, you don't want those flying around your neighborhood. Anything that can fly around will fly around and become an object. And if it's moving at a very high speed, it could do a lot of damage. So that's why you want to make sure there's nothing outside that could get blown around. Uh, if you want to protect your windows, speaking of things blowing around, you have to think well in advance. Uh, my current window has hurricane impact windows on the outsides where we, we face the most wind, not on the sides where we're close to houses. But they're very expensive and they could take months to get installed from the time they you order them and they make them, custom make them, and they install them. So that's something you just can't like say, hey, get these in next week. And uh, so you need to think well in advance. And my other home we lived in before this one, uh, when Hurricane Charlie was threatening us, I had all this plywood in my garage and I went around and I drilled holes in my concrete block house with tap with uh, special drill bits. It took hours of agonizing drilling, putting holes in the thing, then taking using t special Tapcon screws that go into concrete, holding up the plywood, screwing it in. The house is, it's just, it's a disaster. I mean, you can do that, but the impact windows are much better, but they're also very expensive. But if you want to do any of these things, you need to plan well in advance. The majority of damage from hurricanes and typhoons is from water. And if you want to get flood insurance, there's a 30-day wait. So you have to plan in advance. If you want to get it like a day or two before the storm is coming, they're not going to give it to you. But whenever storms are coming, there's a certain area, and it's a very large area, where insurance companies don't write insurance. They just stop writing it. So um, make sure you have all that stuff well, well ahead of the hurricane-type season when they can happen. 
because they won't even write, give you insurance. You can't get it because they just stop writing it. Go around your house from the outside and take video and pictures of your entire outside of your house as much as you can. And then go inside your house and take video and pictures of every room in every detail. Because everything in your house, if it has to be replaced, has a value. And you might be surprised how important it is. If you've got, say, a bookcase with 50 books in it, those books might be average, even say $20 a piece, okay? Well, that's $1,000 the insurance company will pay you for those books. So it's really important to itemize everything that's in your house. And once you've taken all these pictures of everything that you own in your house, pictures on the wall, uh, computers, furniture, stuff in you know your cabinets and all that kind of stuff, anything that can be damaged that you'd have to be replaced. Once you have all those pictures, I like to do pictures and video, so you, you have double coverage. Once you have that, you don't want to store that in your house. You want to store an extra copy. You store it in your house, but you also store an extra copy on an online place like Dropbox or something like that, which offers a free online storage thing for if you're up to a certain size, most people probably won't go over it. So store it there. And then if you ever needed to rely, send that to an insurance company and you no longer had it at your house, you could then just go to the Dropbox, which is protected from not being where you are, and send that information to your insurance company. That could save you thousands and thousands of dollars and headaches and aggravation trying to figure out what it was or what, it, what you had in your home. You're talking a big, big amount of money. Another thing you do is they'll tell you, have a three-day supply of water for everybody in the house. And I can't tell you, living in Florida, how many people wait to the last minute and then they go try to buy water and there's no water available. I remember we had some friends when uh, Hurricane Irma was coming this way. They went to Costco and they had their whole cart they had a big thing of water that they sell at Costco in their cart. And everyone was panicking, of course. So they turn around to get something off the shelf. They turn around someone stole her case of water out of the cart. Now, it hadn't been paid for, but still, they, so that's how crazy, people get crazy when they're under stress. So you don't want to be doing any of these plannings when you're stressed out because you're going to make bad decisions or you're going to spend money on stuff that you really don't need. Now, water is important, but power is very important. And I think a lot of people think, well, you lose your power, you use candles. And candles work, but they're not as good as other options. First of all, they can be very dangerous as far as fires go. Second of all, if you're in an area where there's air conditioning and you no longer have air conditioning, candles put out a lot of heat, which will make your room hotter when you want it to be cooler and if you don't have the air conditioning. And then they also put out fumes and you're breathing those fumes and they don't last that long. So it's better to get ahead of the game and use battery powered devices like lights, uh, you can get these uh, LED lights that don't use a lot of power that last a long time to put out a lot of light and they're a lot safer. So just, and they're not that expensive. You can get them online or any store in their camping section. And think of camping. When you, when you think of being without your basic necessities, you're basically camping. So if you want to look for supplies that would be good for that kind, think camping. Look in the camping section of, you know, the stores or online. Uh, we also have a bunch of battery-powered fans, small ones, big ones, because if you don't have air conditioning, and usually when hurricanes come or typhoons come, it's during the warm season of the year when you would like to have air conditioning. So at least fans will at least give you some comfort. So having fans blowing you makes a big difference. And make sure you have enough of the right kind of batteries to power those fans for several weeks so that you don't run out, because that would not be good. Now, speaking of batteries, you may want to rely on your cell phone, but we all know cell phones have batteries that need to be recharged. And you'll run through them pretty quickly, especially if you're keeping track of everything and you're talk, trying to talk to people. So you can get the little portable battery backup chargers for your cell phone so you can have and make sure they're all charged before the storm comes. Because if you just have them sitting in a the closet, they may have lost their power. So make sure they're fully charged before the storm comes. And then you have multiple ones to recharge your, your phones over and over again. Uh, and then also, if you want something even more powerful, you can get these um, big battery backups that people use for their computers a lot of times. They last a lot longer. They have much, much bigger batteries. And um, so you can use those for 
you know, small functions like lights or even running a lot, you know, charging your laptop. And now a lot of people like think, well, get a, I'll get a generator, you know, a gas power generator. And although those can be good, the problem is you need to have a lot of gasoline stored. And where are you going to store gasoline in a storm? It's probably going to be inside your house, in your garage or something. So you have to weigh that factor because that could be very dangerous. And never run a generator indoors or even inside of a garage. Always has to be run outside so that the fumes go go outside and you don't have the carbon monoxide. So uh, I don't. I live in Florida all these years. I don't have a generator. I really don't want to deal with it. And there are also things that you can look on YouTube for the reviews of, but they're solar-powered generators. And what they are is they have, they're battery banks that you have charged up and you can recharge them with solar panels. And they've come way down in price. They used to be very expensive, not very good. Now you can get them, and you can get them for a couple hundred dollars, and you can even spend up to like a couple thousand dollars if you just want more power and more solar. But that's another option. So if you're without power for a long time, uh, at least you, you know, you're not going to run your home on it, but you could at least have some uh, minimal constant source of power that you can't run out of. I remember when Hurricane Gloria was coming towards Connecticut. It came and it was very powerful. It was only a Category 1, but up in the Northeast, a Category 1 storm is, storm is not very good because up there, they're very high trees with huge canopies with large leaves. So they're like lollipops. The wind catches that and it just blows it down really easily. And I remember driving through New Haven uh, after the storm, and there were trees, down, huge trees, trees that are probably hundreds of years old, knocked down all over the place because those trees are more susceptible. Now, living in Florida, our trees tend to be much lower and much more rounded in shape and have like huge trunks, and they're much more protected against the wind. I know some people that the day before the storm hit, they went and did their usual grocery shopping because they do their grocery shopping on that day of the week. And they filled their refrigerator and freezer with tons of food. The next day the storm came, they lost power for two weeks, and they lost all their food. So if you see a storm that's coming, that's a good idea to hold off buying any perishable foods that can go bad if you lose power. Now you should have on the other side of this, non-perishable food. Canned goods are great. Things that you can um, cook with minimal effort are very good. And as far as cooking goes, I have a little camp stove. It's a very simple thing where you screw on one of those little small propane tanks at the bottom of it, and then I can cook off of that. And I've got several of those um, propane tanks, the very, very small ones, stored away in my garage in a safe place. And so you can be cooking. And then make sure you have matches and you keep your matches in a dry place because none of it's good unless you have a way to light it. But still be very careful if you do any of that kind of stuff. If you have anything to do in the house as far as power, like vacuum your house, you want to do it before the storm comes and there's a risk of losing power. So vacuum your entire house. If you have any laundry to do, get your laundry done ahead of time. Get all of it done so that you know, you've got a whole bunch of clean clothes to make it through if there's times where you can't have power to do laundry. If you still have a landline phone, but it's one of those um, uh, portable ones that need battery, well, make sure you have a good old fashioned plug in the wall type phone that doesn't take batteries because you'll need that because the cordless ones won't work. Make sure you run, if you have a garbage disposal in your sink, in your kitchen sink, make sure you run it before the storm because you don't want a bunch of food laying down there and no power and you have no way to run it. And that's not going to be good. It could either clog up your drain or it could really smell. And who knows how long that could be there. And what I'd recommend is if a storm is coming, just stop using your garbage disposal. Throw the stuff, scraps into the garbage so that nothing gets caught down there. If you do lose power, use all the food in your refrigerator first that will go bad, the fresh food. If you've got meats, you want to cook those right away, use those that food first. And then if it gets to a point where you no longer think it's safe to use, then that's where you go to the non-perishable foods, the canned goods and the things, you know, things like rice or pasta or peanut butter or beans or stuff in cans or whatever that can last a long time, has a long shelf life. You're not going to maybe, if you don't have a lot of water or maybe you're not sure if the water is safe to use, think paper plates, plastic silverware, all that kind of stuff so that you could just throw the stuff out. 
you can't do dishes, you want to, don't want a bunch of dirty dishes laying around. Now, when it comes to storms like this and if power outages, cash is king. You may go to a gas station, even if it's open or a store, and if they don't have power, their credit card systems may not be working. So you're going to need to have cash. Cash is the only thing that's going to be good. So have some extra cash laying around so that you have it. And speaking of gas stations, if they do lose power, then you're going to want to make sure your car is fully filled up before this happens. And because if you have to drive somewhere and you only have half a tank of gas, a quarter tank of gas, that may not last that long. Plus, having a car, you have a, the cigarette lighter in most cars where you can recharge your cell phone. But if you don't have much gas, then you can't drive your car to charge your cell phone. So make sure your car is fully gas tank is fully filled up. Now, speaking of cars, if you ever have to evacuate, and we had to do this when Hurricane Irma was coming, we evacuated from Tampa, Florida to North Carolina. It was like a 14 hour drive. It was kind of scary because as we were going north, gas stations were closing one after another. And we were very fortunate. We waited kind of too long to evacuate. And like I said, the gas stations were closing. The only thing good was there wasn't as much traffic, but you don't want to be like driving and run out of gas with a storm coming. It's not a good thing. If you do try to evacuate and you try to take the regular highway, those roads could get very, very blocked. And you don't want to be stuck on a highway in, in the heat running out of gas. So it's not a bad idea to plan alternate routes, like go on, get if you can actually get a paper map or go on like the computer and search Google Maps, something like that, and try to plot through the back roads how to get out of where you have to go. Even though it may take longer in miles and, and normally in time, it gives you an option that you can take where everyone isn't going the same way. Because when people are panicking, they're not thinking of taking the back roads. They're just going to get on the highway and they're going to panic. That's what they're going to do. So that's something to do. And like I said, if you can have a paper map, because just in case GPS is not working or your phones are not working for some reason or the cell towers are down, having a paper map as ancient as it seems might not be a bad thing to do. I have one of Florida in our car all the time, just in case. And then also you may want to have a to-go bag of your most important papers. Now, we evacuated for Hurricane Irma. It's a really weird feeling to fill your car with all your valuables that you have, chairs, mementos, and stuff like that, and drive away not seeing if you'll see your house the same way when you come back. And you don't know how long that can be. So having a to-go bag ahead of time with all your important documents, your insurance, your maybe your will or passports or anything that you consider birth certificates, whatever you, whatever is valuable to you, everyone's different. Have that all in one place that you can take. So you could just grab it and go if you had to. We had to make a quick decision to evacuate because the track wasn't changing. We were kind of like last minute panicking, running around. What do we got to take? What do we got to take? It's not a good thing. It's not a good time to be stressful because it's stressful enough to have to evacuate. When we did evacuate Florida for Hurricane Irma, we did throw out all our food in our refrigerator. Since we were going to be gone that great of a distance for we didn't know how long, we didn't want to take a chance. So it's unfortunate to throw a bunch of food away, and then we had to make sure we got it into a garbage can that wasn't going to be sitting in our garage for two weeks. But if you don't want to do that, what you can do is you could take a, a cup of water and fill it up most of the way with and then put it in the freezer and freeze it standing up. And then once it's frozen, you could put like a quarter or a dime on top of that frozen water and stand it up in the freezer. So if you, you evacuate and the house does lose power for a short period of time, but won't show any difference, power's out for quite a while, that water is going to melt. And if the quarter, when you come home, is now at the bottom of the cup, even if it's the power comes on and it freezes again, you'll know that you're out of power for a long time, and probably the food in your refrigerator and freezer are probably not safe to eat. People in Florida, I've seen this, after hurricanes, they'll stand in long, hot lines waiting for a, a bucket of ice. And I'm thinking to myself, this doesn't make sense. Didn't you know this hurricane was coming? Everyone does. So you can't control the weather, but you can control how it affects you. So this special tip is, what I do, if any time I know a storm is coming within four days of it potentially coming, I go around the house, I find all the plastic containers I have. You can use like soda bottles, like a two-liter soda bottle. If you've got those like 
plastic containers you put store food in. You don't want glass. It has to be plastic. Fill them all up 95% with water. You have to leave a little bit of space for uh, the expansion of the ice. I put those in my freezer ahead of time, and I just make freeze blocks of ice, basically in these plastic containers. And what's good is if you just have regular ice and you put it in your freezer, when that melts, it's going to run out all over the place. So, and speaking of ice, if you have an ice maker and it's on the door, there's a risk of it melting. You want to make sure you dump the ice out so that doesn't all melt and get all over the floor. But anyway, back to these containers, you fill up the freezer with all these things so that they're all frozen solid. And if you do lose power, you now have these massive blocks of ice that you can then keep some in your freezer and some you put in your refrigerator. Or maybe if you want, you could take your most important food and if you have a big cooler and you just put them all in the cooler with this ice and this will make it last much 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 longer food costs a lot of money and there's no reason to lose it if you can't have it and it's nice to have it if you need it those are those little bonus tips i have uh, experiencing a hurricane can be stressful but being prepared can help on the stress a lot so we hope this helps you be prepared and if you think you can share it with someone that might need it if I missed any of these tips or if you've got tips of your own, shoot us an email at info at stressforyou.net. And as always, thanks for listening. <laughs>